back and live now from Fox. I'm Austin Westfall. Let's turn to something that maybe isn't quite for the squeamish. The Northeast U.S. is bracing for an invasion of giant venomous spiders with four inch long legs that can parachute through the air. That's right. That's not a joke. Earlier this year, New Jersey Pest Control warned of the incoming spiders, saying that Joro spiders will be, quote, hard to miss as females have a leg span of up to four inches and they're also known for their vibrant yellow and gray bodies <laughs> let's talk about this more uh, i want to talk about these eight-legged freaks with ecologist andy davis of the odom school of ecology at the university of georgia andy good to see you um first thing that's going to come to mind because i was browsing through the videos that we have of these spiders and i didn't see them actually flying how do they fly yeah, so this part of the story has been a little bit uh, exaggerated. They do fly, but only as babies. And so if anyone has ever read Charlotte's Web, you know that at the end of the book, Charlotte dies. But before she dies, she lays an egg, egg sac, which then uh, uh, hangs out during the winter. And then when those babies hatch in the spring, those little babies send up a little thread of silk into the air, which catches the wind and then those little babies fly off into the distance and that's how they disperse. And so to be clear, the adult spiders, the ones you're seeing here on the picture, those don't fly at all. And so technically these spiders do parachute as, as young spiders, but really this is kind of a thing that all spiders do or a lot of spiders, they have that parachuting stage. So we're looking at the video and, and it's it's tough. The the angles on these videos are almost a little bit deceptive. The the video doesn't do it justice how big these things are. How how big are they compared to say and forgive me, I'm no ecologist myself. Let's compare it to whatever the biggest spider would be that's in the US. Oh boy. Uh, you know, it's, it's almost better to think of this in terms of like in, it's the size of like a baseball or a, uh, a, a like a an orange like if you had an orange and you put one of these Juro spiders over top of it, its legs would cover the orange. And so it's it's big. Um, some people have said they're the size of a, you know, the human palm. If you put one in my hand, a full grown female, she would cover my palm. So they are definitely a big, big spider uh, compared to the ones we're used to seeing here in this country. Have you that ever handled of, one? Have you ever yeah. handled one yourself? Oh yeah, all the time in, in my lab. And uh, I conduct research on these spiders. Um, a lot of my research is looking at their physiology, trying to see what makes them tick, trying to see what makes them able to survive in this non-native range, range here, and also how they can survive in a urban, human dominated urban setting, which they seem to be quite adept at doing. Yeah, what's their temperament like? Are they aggressive? Are they chill? They're very chill. I, in fact, I've actually studied this here in my lab. There's a way that you can test the personality of a spider. And I've done that with these Juro spiders. And it turns out that they are one of the shyest species of spiders ever documented. So they're very, very chill, to use your words. Is there venom on the high or the low end of the danger scale? What happens if somebody does get bit? Yeah, so I get this question a lot too. The answer is not much. So compared to like a brown recluse or a black widow spider, these are not even in the same category. This is akin to like a, a generic backyard garden spider, right? Some people have equated their bite kind of like a bee sting and you might get like a, some redness and some soreness, but nothing medically relevant. Spiders don't mess with you unless you mess with them, right? Pretty much, and I kind of use this as a almost like a motto to tell people what to do when they see these spiders, really. You really don't have to do anything. Don't feel like you have to you know, get rid of them. Don't feel like you have to move them out of the way unless, unless they're right in your way on, on your doorstep. If you really just leave them alone, they'll leave you alone and everybody will walk away happy. So they are scary looking, but remember, they're also very, very shy. And so they're not gonna come attack you. Um, so really, there's not really any re need to be afraid of them uh, at all. Boy, after talking with you, it really seems like these spiders have been getting a bad shake in the PR department lately. I mean, they, they seem to be pretty chill. I, I gotta ask you about the geography of these things because much of the reports out there have been discussing that they are coming to the New York area, uh, but they're not completely new to the US, obviously, correct? 
That's right. So they were introduced to the to this country in Georgia uh, in 2013. So they've been here for about a decade now. They've been spreading ever since here in Georgia. They've also now spread into the nearby states, Alabama, the Carolinas, even up to uh, West Virginia. There were some spotted in Baltimore last fall, and that's pretty much as far north as we've seen them. Um, those were probably accidentally transported by a vehicle. Like these spiders can get onto a vehicle and then stick. And then when the vehicle travels to wherever it's going, you know, the spider will jump off. So right now, we don't really have any idea of when these spiders will quote unquote arrive in the New York or the Northeast region. We do know that they are perfectly suited to living in that area based on their physiology, for example. They're definitely suited for living in the northern part of the U.S. And so we definitely know it's going to be a matter of when, not if. Yeah, what kind of habitats are they typically looking for? Good question. It turns out that the Juro spiders can live in almost any habitat, really. Uh, that, that includes a natural area like a forest or a park, but also a backyard or even a sidewalk. And so that's one of the things I've been interested in, in studying in my lab, actually, is to see what makes these gyro spiders so adept at living in a human-dominated, very stressful environment. Because here in Georgia, I've seen these things on streetlights, on lamp posts, on, on the sides of buildings, really weird places that you wouldn't really see a normal, everyday garden spider living in. And so it seems like these gyro spiders have, have something different about them that allows them to live in these urban dominated uh, settings. And I think it has to do with their physiology, really. You know, is there anything else interesting about these spiders that you've been researching that you'd like to get out there? Oh boy. You know, I, I think the thing to keep in mind, everybody keeps asking this question about what to do when they see one, right? And uh, I'll re reiterate that, that really, I don't think people really need to do anything at all when they see these things. Everybody needs to keep in mind that these spiders are here to stay. There is no stopping their spread at this point. There is millions upon millions of them now. And if you, even if you do try to get rid of them in your backyard, they'll really just come back the next year. And so I've been telling people over and over again that really we need to get, we need to learn to live with them because they're not going anywhere. They're really not gonna hurt you. And they're really kind of a fascinating creature. And so I've been telling people maybe get to, get to know the, the spiders right? And teach your kids about what spiders do. So these are almost a, like a good learning opportunity for people. Are they considered a pest? Uh, what's their role in the food chain? That's a good question. Um, so in terms of what they do to, in the ecosystem, uh, the jury is still out on that question. Um, we don't really have any evidence that they're damaging the ecosystem per se, not like uh, other critter, critters that come to this country that are really nasty like the uh, the spotted lantern flies in the northeast i mean those those things are absolutely a menace because they eat trees so the juro spiders don't seem to be in that category there's no obvious damage being done the only thing that might be happening is that the juro spiders are probably out competing some of our native spiders for some of the insects that they eat but on the other hand the juro spiders also eat things like mosquitoes and flies and even spotted lanternflies too in their native range. And so there might be some small benefits of the Juro spiders arriving in certain areas. I wouldn't be doing my job as a curious journalist if I didn't ask you what's in that terrarium behind you. Oh, those are some Madagascar hissing cockroaches that I use to scare some of my students. There's nothing like having a cockroach on your hand to wake your students up in the middle of the day. All right, Andy, we'll leave it there for now. Thank you for the insight. And uh, again, uh, I, it's unfortunate that these spiders are getting such bad PR. They are very cool looking. We will leave it there for now. We'll hit you up in the future for any more bug-related stories. Take care. Have a good weekend.